and welcome back to Coming Clean with Indy Lee, a podcast series about living with purpose, passion, and being fully present. I am your host, Indy Lee, and today, yes, I get to sit down with Katya Libin, who is one of the co-founders of Hey Mama, which is this redonkulous, powerful network of other moms who are also entrepreneurs, who are trying to figure out how to kind of balance it all. I mean, you know, Katya, I'm someone who doesn't believe there is any balance in the 50-50 world, but I do believe women can have their cake and eat it too. And you have created a network of women who are really showing that it is possible with, with work, but not only that, kind of with each other. So welcome to the podcast, Katya. Thank you so much, Indy. I am really excited to be here and I'm going to add redonkulous to our official website language yeah, right? because it's just an underutilized word. I together. agree. I mean, we have to have more fun in our language and it doesn't have to be, I mean, you know me, I'm not this straight laced person. I really believe in having fun and um, living boldly and passionately and um, not taking myself too seriously. So that's what I love. And about now everybody's you. like, and okay, where is she going to go with this one? <laughs> But with, with all the podcasts, it really is about, for me, it's about amplifying other voices who are creating their own path out there. And um, for me, you have really blazed the trail, truly. Like, I, what I have even seen you guys do in pivoting with the pandemic is just unbelievable. So maybe you could tell a little bit about what Hey Mama is, and then... Even more, actually, before you even go to that, maybe you could tell everybody a little bit about yourself before you started Hey Mama, and then I, I know how I want to go in. <laughs> I, I would love to. Um, yeah, so a bit more about me. I'm I'm actually an immigrant um, to the U.S. My family came here when I was three years old from Russia. Uh, we came over with about eighty dollars per person, um, no I language. Didn't know this. Mm -hmm. We moved to uh, Flatbush, Brooklyn, and to the the projects there, which hilariously my parents thought was amazing because coming from communist Russia, it was actually a better in, in some ways like living environments in that arena. But Russia was a, a very um, cultured place. Like the, the academics there were bar none, you know, but the um, living arrangements were actually pretty um, what we would kind of describe as third world. Uh, so coming here to the U.S., my parents had um, to really take in everything completely fresh. And they took such a huge risk to give my sister and I a better opportunity, a better future. And I always say that I feel like they sacrificed their dreams so that my sister and I could pursue ours. Um, and that's exactly what I, you know, I really wanted to do. I had that immigrant hustle. Um, my mom is an incredibly strong woman. So is my sister. She was actually an entrepreneur first and really inspired me. And growing up in Brooklyn and Queens and Manhattan, um, I think I really, you know, I knew that the world, that there was a, like an endless possibility out there and it felt like it was in my grasp, but it, it did feel to me when I came into the workforce, I didn't have a built-in network. I didn't have um, a parents that I could go to to ask about business advice. Um, and so I really saw firsthand as we started building Hey Mama how incredibly valuable those support structures are um, if for some they don't they don't have them naturally or they're kind of, you know, they're the working mom and there's a bunch of stay-at-home moms and they kind of feel left out and out of place. Um, so, yeah, my background when I got into working was in partnerships and media and sales. And um, I was given a great opportunity early on to start working at a tech company. They took a kind of a big risk on me because I, you know, I didn't have an Ivy League background. Um uh, it was really like a, a very competitive job market at that time. And um, I started working there and ended up finding a lot of success because I just never stopped, literally never stopped working, which probably wasn't oh, yeah. the best for balance. So I've learned a lot about balance since then. <laughs> um, but I also just love working with people and, you know, building relationships. And that's what made me really good at my job there, um, which all seemed to work out pretty well for many, many years until... I had my daughter and that's when I started to realize that my tech company with all bros and dudes um, didn't really have the tools or community to support me. And I looked around and none of my friends had had kids yet. Um, and my local community, at Tri it was Tribeca at the time. And 
I just really had a hard time meeting other working moms. And that's kind of what led to the birth of Hey Mama was that's just really was per- ask. personal pain point of yeah. saying, I, I want to make mom friends. I want to build a business. I actually don't know how to do either of those things. Um, but then more than that, and I think Indy, you'll relate to this. I wanted to feel a part of something beyond myself. You know, I wanted to be a part of a collective of women that was committed to seeing each other succeed. I wanted to have more fun in the journey as well, mm-hmm. build deeper relationships, um, help make the world a better place than when I found it, and especially make the world a better place for my daughter as I started to see just how much working mothers have stacked against them. And so I think it's that perfect storm of you know, immigrant hustle and like really self-starting motivator and uh, being really like this problem was one that I just, I knew I wanted to try to approach. And I think that's pretty common. And that, you know, when I start, always start the conversation, people, I, I, I believe there is that always that common denominator. There's either a, a passion or a pain point that people come into it. It's usually an event or a series of a few events that they realize that that is their purpose. And for you, it sounds like having your daughter, you know, having the kids and then realizing I, there's no network for me. How am I supposed to do this? How can I be a working woman and still be a mom? Like, how do we do this? And you Absolutely. took that and then created Hey Mama. Absolutely. And I, I was so surprised by how isolated I felt when I was a new mom. Mm-hmm. I just never really saw that part of it coming. And I think a lot of women can resonate with this. Um, we are just made, I think, to, to gather and to be yeah. in communities. And we're living in a time when we're not born into our communities, really. Mm-hmm. We're kind of born outside of them and we have to go and find them. And so some of the separation of being further apart from our families and everyone being so transit, you know, transient, it, it really you have to build it for yourself. And that's what I, I hope Hey Mama has created as a space for working mothers. No, oh, it's not home away from home. I there's no doubt is what you you guys have created. Um, I remember after having my son and working at HBO, I had no idea how to do this. Like, what does reentry look like? Is this normal that these expectations? Am I alone? It's you know you have that. First of all, you have the postpartum. Then you have the the postpartum, the emotional hormone, all those things that can go along with it in various different degrees for diff- you know, for every woman is very different. And then put on the pressure of you have this career, you want to go back to the career, or maybe you want to pivot. How do you do that? Is it safe to have that conversation? Who is it safe to have that conversation with? You, you know, our generation, and, and I'm older than you, but, you know, we, parents didn't have that experience. You know, we... I believe my generation is one of them that you know, is typically now going back to work or wanting more. And, and we're seeing that as, you know, the, from that generation down, it's not only financially necessary for us to go back to work, but we want it for ourselves. You know, we want to create this path and there isn't any rule book. And again, it's, it's sort of like something like, who do you talk to? Who do you trust? And hey, mom is creating that. Thank you for saying that. I mean, it's, it's literally what lights us up every day is thinking about, you know, how do we help this community of women who we see are just such incredible leaders and that we see that moms are such incredible leaders and that motherhood is this training ground for leadership, right? Like moms bring out the best in their employees and they're better listeners and they say 51% are calmer in crisis and 47% are more diplomatic, yet motherhood really has so many disadvantages in our career. So, you know, the stats of 75% of expecting mothers are excited to go back to work after giving birth, but then 43% end up leaving the workforce entirely. That's such a massive percentage of women that really want to come back. And then they end up coming, trying at it and and feeling like they have to leave. Um, So we've seen time and time again that all of the job loss, by the way, (laughs) has been from women over the past year. So if we think about even like 140,000 jobs lost in December, men gained 16,000 jobs. There's so much work that we're going to have to do as a community to try to pull up and kind of bring more women to have a seat at the table as they've they've kind of, they've had to take a step back. And that's a lot of what we're committed, um, committed to doing now and always. 
How have you, and you know, we didn't talk about this before, but how have you seen COVID impact this? Because so many, you know, moms have these young, young children at home who have now had to homeschool. And I mean, I can tell you, my son from college came home because they basically shut down. So he came home. My senior in high school, who was a junior then, you know, was, you know, schooling from home, but independent because she was, you know, 16, 17 years old. But my nine year old had to figure out third grade. And you, as a parent, had to be on top of it because we weren't prepared for this. And, and how, whoever thought that was going to happen, where all of a sudden, okay, everything's shut and you've got to figure out how to school your child with the education system who wasn't prepared for this, where you couldn't figure it out. Yeah, it's been so um, life-changing in all ways, right? Every part of our lives has shifted. A lot of the things that we would rely upon were completely taken away, you know, support structures, sending your kids to school so you could go to work, you know, was completely shifted. And now we're living in this almost fully remote workforce. And as things open up, we'll start to see some shifts. But I think fundamentally, um, the lines between work and motherhood have were so blurred and the expectations on mothers of what they take care of and their workload really increased. Right. Yeah. Because now the kids were still coming to them for everything during the day. Plus, they oh have their God. work. Plus, you don't have any help. Plus, you can't see any of your friends. I mean, it's like talk there about no... just stacking the cards against us. It's no wonder that so many women just said, I can't do this anymore. I'm at my wits end. I'm burnt out. Something's got to give. And, you know, moms, they, they had to choose. And that's kind of the um That's what's going to take us so much time to make up for is just the losses that we're seeing in the workforce from the past year. What do you think the most common pain point is that you're seeing now for working moms? I mean, you have your finger on the pulse of it as, you know, leading this organization. What, what, What are you seeing is the most common across? Yeah, I think it's important to note that like working moms aren't a monolith. So there's so many different types of experiences and black and brown moms are facing, you know, even more job loss. And um, everyone's situation is is different. Uh, But what I think we can all universally agree on is that having things like universal child care, for example, um, 12 weeks of paid maternity leave, for example, would make a fundamental shift in what we're able to achieve. And the the pressures that moms face. So there are some basics that we need to push our administration to provide. And there's this systematic like lack of support that's we're so far behind behind other uh, industrialized nations. It's it's shocking almost when you think about, um, I I don't, these aren't my words, but once I heard them from Eve Brodsky, they really stuck with me. And her words were really simple. She said, you know, America hates working mothers. And it like it, it was one of those statements that like so deeply penetrated in my mind because you don't want to believe that to be the case. No. But when you look at the clean data of like what we're given and what we're not and what's expected of us, it's almost like we're, you know, being set up to fail. So while I can't speak for every mom, I do know that some of those more fundamental shifts are very important. I think moms that work at companies need things from their employers. You know, they need flexibility, they need training, they need um, opportunities for growth. And they also need companies to not assume that they're somehow less capable, less willing, less eager for different things. Yeah, because they're moms. Um, So one of the big campaigns, Indy, that we're launching actually on May 18th is called Motherhood on the Resume. And we're going to be asking thousands of women to add motherhood to their resume and start. I love that. I love that. Instead of thinking of it as a negative, let's talk about the positive. Absolutely. It is a positive. You know, it It is. Oh my God. But it's not treated that way, right? So we have 33% of working mothers have been passed over for a promotion or important assignment because they have children. So of course, you know, we believe that motherhood belongs on the resume because we have to tear down this cultural bias against mothers that's impacting their careers and really recognize motherhood as this training ground for being a badass, incredible leader. So we're very excited for this movement. That is incredible. I look back and, you know, I said, okay, well, you know, I was given the opportunity to work at home and transition back into when I worked over at HBO and that was a very progressive company. So, I mean, I'm very, very fortunate, but I remember leaving 
and working for another firm. And I had to leave because I, my son needed me and there was no way to balance it. And so I had a choice. It was either my child or my career. And Absolutely. I yep. never thought about it until literally this moment because he was going through issues and I couldn't take him to the doctor without being frowned upon. And I was like, okay. Um, and I knew I wanted to make a change and it was very easy for me to say, because I knew I wanted to go back to basics and I mean, everything happened the way it's supposed to, but I never thought about it until this conversation because I had that, it, it, there wasn't a choice. It was like, Hey, let's help. It was like, all right, well, I'm going to do this. Um, and now I truly, I mean, I'm fortunate because we are, it happens to be a lot of women in my company and what I can say definitively from myself and the people who invested in me, it is always, always family first. There is never, ever, your child needs you, your family needs you, you're extended, drop everything, we'll figure it out. And that's a testament to you, Indy. You know, I think that's a testament to women leadership. I'm not saying that men can't have that mm -hmm. level of compassion and policy. Not only can they, I'm sure there are many of them that do, in fact, have that same value system. But I do think that once you're in that role as a mother and you have these beings that are so dependent on you, plus you're also taking care of your parents, plus you're mm. also taking care of your friends and you were we're, caretakers. We're you caretakers. Really but we're being, you know, we're being, I think that work is not being valued. And that's the whole problem is that it's seen as free work. It's seen as just it, it, there's not a price on it, you know? And it's so, also so hard because mothers are asked to trade their resume for their family, right? So I don't know if what it's like now, obviously, because I went to them becoming a founder, but it was sort of like if I left that world, that was it. I was losing my family. Can, I was losing that. What's that gap on your resume? And it was seen as a negative. And so you were starting again. I have, I have people who I'm blessed that work with me where before they worked with us, they, they're like, well, it's, you know, I know there's a gap, you know, or a friend of mine says, what am I going to do? I, I gave up my career to raise my children. And it was very hard for friends of mine, I know to enter the workforce and still is very difficult for them to be considered to work in the, you know, get back to the workforce because they spent 12 years raising a family and it was seen as a negative. And yet those skills are invaluable. Time management, <laughs> calm under crisis and fire. Absolutely. You know, it's like meet the chief people officer of your house, the chief financial officer. Moms are pretty much deciding on so many of the purchases within, a, within their household. Um, I think they do. There's a lot of skills that are transferable. Absolutely. That's part of what our goal is with the campaign is to really give women more of those tools to think about how they're reflecting motherhood on their resume and to have women like yourself, Indy, really come on to the Hey Mama platform and share honest stories because yeah. this isn't all going to be positive stories that come out. We're going to have a lot of women that might want to open up about times that they really felt this discrimination firsthand. Right. And unless we really name it and start pressuring companies um, to really address the unconscious bias that's there, we're not going to really see a shift. So that's a perfect segue into what resources does Hey Mama you know, provide to support moms in this case? Yeah. So every member that joins Hey Mama, um, and you can apply on our website, ends up uh, receiving kind of a core number of benefits that we provide through the community, right? So we always say that you're going places, but you're really, you're not going there alone. So what we see first and foremost is just access to a highly vetted digital community of women. Mm -hmm. It's also in person once we come back to in-person I know, events. that's how I first um, I was a part of it, was doing an event, which yeah. was awesome. <laughs> Um, so access to a highly vetted digital community. Um, we also have, um, you know, access to all of the programming um, and content that we create for our members. So last year we had Serena Williams keynote our conference. We've had incredible speakers, experts come in and lead roundtables and workshops and all of that is included for members. So they get really unlimited kind of buffet of um, inspirational, motivational, and really tactical content to help them grow in their business. Um, mentorship is a big part of what we I do. Indy, I know you've been involved in that, but we think mentorship is such a core 
element of how we can help advance women forward. So helping I'm still women. part of my group. We still we still keep in touch and not just as someone as who who acted in the role of mentor. I mean, so much I gained from the, it was really a symbiotic relationship. I gained so much from these incredible women in terms of their stories. It was just I think it was a, an incredible experience for me. And one, listen, sign me up anytime you want me to be a part of it, because I loved it. It's such a rewarding experience. And I, I think, you know, we we can all learn so much from each other. So I think day to day, just even within Hey Mama, all the questions that get asked and responded to. So like our conversations platform of just, you know, hey, I need anything under the sun. I need, you know, advice about my kid and what they're doing to a manufacturer to want to get my company oh my acquired. You know, so it's kind of like... <laughs> Oh my God, my email. I love it. I love it. Like, you know, you have the in search of, and what is so amazing is when someone says they need something, even if I don't need something, just seeing the emails of women helping and empowering and supporting other women throughout the day, when I see these email trains go on, that lifts you up because you're like, yes. Yeah. Yeah, You're not alone. You're not alone. Just watching the train of them. It's like, yes, I love it people out there just crushing it, you know, just know. trying and working and dreaming. It's a beautiful it's, thing. It's incredible. So what struck me is really how tight the community is despite, of the, despite the lack of the in-person events right now, whether it's like you have obviously the Slack channel to reach out to each other's um, shout outs to the community as we were talking about when you have wins. It's like this incredible force that helps other women go through their day, Right. What's so interesting for me is that I've been a part of other communities in the past, right, of other women communities in the past. And I really have to tell you, Katya, I've never experienced anything like Hey Mama. I really, I want you to know that from, from the bottom of my heart. I, tr- I have been very fortunate to be part of some of these communities, and nothing holds a candle to Hey Mama, really. Whether it's the... the the Slack channels, whether it's the online portal that you net guys have now with the new website, the ISO, the all those things with the email connections, podcasting, clubhouse events that you're doing, you guys are reaching people where they need to be reached and providing ways for women to be found wherever they are. And I just wanted to acknowledge both you and Amory for what you created because I don't know that you guys get enough of the kudos for it. Thank you, Indy, so much. Honestly, I wish I could tell you that it, it, it gets old, but it never does because you, any business owner, any person loves feeling appreciated. But I think especially entrepreneurs, and you know this, and I'm sure some of your listeners that are building companies, um, there's so much that goes into building a successful business. And just knowing that it's making an impact for people for us is like, the most amazing feeling like in our grandest mission we would imagine you know hundreds and thousands of incredible working mothers around the world where anywhere you go you can tap in and rely on a hey mama like it, it really can feel like that um snuggie for lack yeah, of yeah like we need our adult snuggie yeah, uh, absolutely listen it takes a village and you are creating you know it's true but Listen, I always laughed at the creates a village. And, you know, when it first when I first started hearing it and when you start to really think about it, it is the it tr- is so true in so many different facets of our life. But this is a village that you're creating, but you're just not create. You're now creating an international village of women who are supporting one another and empowering. And it's so warming to see women reach across the aisles of whatever aisle that is and say, what can I do to help you? Absolutely. I think helping. Yes. Helping. It feels so good. It feels good to give help. I think we've normalized also women asking for help and not feeling like they need to have all the answers, you know? So it's, it's, it's a return on energy. It's a very dynamic experience, right? You're not buying a dress. You could go spend $350 on a dress and wear it a couple times a season. And that's great. That's a great investment because you might feel absolutely amazing when you wear that dress. Mm -hmm. But when you invest in a community, it's something that you get, you could get an emotional or... Oh, the payback is, is just... And I hate to use that language because it sounds financial, but the the graces in the giving 
right? We've always, you and I've had this conversation, but then your cup runneth over when you do those things. And I will tell you personally, for anybody listening, I'm hoping a lot of people are listening and watching. um, I mean, I've come to you personally and said, I need help. And you were the first person, okay, this is how you do it. This is what I do. And I've never experienced that type of, let me open up my Rolodex of who I know. And personally, like, let me personally connect them to you. And I watch it now, even with me paying it forward with other Hey Mamas, you know, in the community, like, who do you need? What can I help you with? And it's, it's just, it's beautiful to watch and it's beautiful to be a part of, to be mm-hmm. honest with you. I agree with you on that, Indy. It's so rewarding to to have that kind of reciprocity, that intention and reciprocity. And something that came to me while you were talking is like giving moms and women the permission to invest in themselves and to put themselves first and to put, this is a place that, hey, mama, you know what? Yes, you can come with anything that you're dealing with. And some women come and talk about their kids. But I will say mostly women that join Hey Mama they know we all know that we're mothers and we believe in we want to be the best moms ever but they feel really seen for their business and their drive and their they want to invest in themselves and their kind of their careers yeah, those relationships 100%. right cuz nothing pays dividends like your professional and personal relationships it's going to have the best uh, impact yeah. on anyone long term and that's just it what hey mama provides isn't just professional it's also personal i've met friends um, talking to one now, <laughs> um, but truly as a result of this community, I'm meeting so many incredible like-minded individuals that you feel a part of something bigger than who you are. So what is next for you? If you can share, like what's next for Hey Mama? Like what do you see is happening next? I know it's hard to say what's happening in the next, you know, three to five years because Listen, this has been a weird one to be sure this past year, but what do you think for the next 12 to 24 months? Yeah, no, I love that question. Um, what's next for us, I believe, is uh, really pivoting to be a tech company because mm. we started as an offline events business, right? I know. We I were, don't know that people realize that. I should mention it. You, it did. It started like a, as events. Yeah, like a local community, you. like, hey, we're going to yeah. get moms together here and then we're going to get them together in other cities, like very much at the foundation, there's no shortcuts for building community. You actually have to like do a lot of the groundwork and meet and get people together. We didn't just put up a site and say, hey, everyone come to our digital no. community. I um, mean, I don't know if you know how I first learned about Hey Mama. It what was event through, was it? It wasn't even an event here. It was Natalie Uling said, oh, there's this great community. It's called Hey Mama. And I rolled my eyes. I'm like, What? And it was in the Denver area. And she's like, you should see about what they have going on near you. That's how I heard about Hey Mama for the first time through a friend of mine who's in Colorado. That's amazing. Denver is such a great market. We have 11 chapters now. We're expanding to several more. Boston's next on the list. We're going to get to Nashville, Atlanta, definitely Texas. Um, in 2022, I think we'll probably end up going internationally. We'll probably yes. try London. Uh, but pivoting to a tech company, and by, by that, I mean, we're always a community first, but at least having tech that can support that and make our user experience yeah. better. So we're really excited about looking at things like how do we match our members, you know, based on their personalities, based on their mm-hmm. their challenges that they're facing? How do we really help facilitate these high performance professional and personal relationships? Um, how do we help our members really, you know, get to know like the right, que- how do we give them the right questions based on when they're literally needing them? Because there's a lot of information out there. I think we want to help curate and and serve it up to our members because they're so busy. They're working moms. They're the busiest women on the planet. So we don't want someone logging in and spending all day on, hey, mama, you know, that's not our goal. We're not like building a social network that wants to capitalize off of a member's attention every day. We want them to come and get value, get what they need, feel supported, and then get back to their life because they have so much going on. So that's been exciting, just kind of pivoting and building out more of a an engineering team and starting to think about the future of the product and how we start coming back to in real life events is going to be a big focus as well. 
No, and I think by going and doing the tech side, it also allows you to open up to all communities and gives everybody that access that they need. And it's not contained to where can we start a chapter. It's it's global. Absolutely. Okay, so my final question, and I ask everybody this, but like, okay, you're running in this business that is expanding. You're a mom on top of that, right? You're an entrepreneur. So it like constantly thinking, right? So founder, entrepreneur, mom, friend, good friend, I have to add to, not just somebody, but someone who's really there and listens. I'm, I'm attesting and listen, she's mine, guys. Uh, <laughs> I'm only friend to hear. That's right. I just, I don't know how you do it, but how do you stay present for you? I know I've reached out to you as a friend saying, and, you know, do you have a few moments? Like, and I know I'm not the only one. How do you carve time for you? Yeah, it's a great question. Well, well, for starters, I'll say that I'm fortunate to be one of the people that gets energy from others. Mm -hmm. So if there's like, if I felt depleted after all of my interactions with people, then I probably wouldn't have been building a community. I'm just so energized and inspired by this, by our conversations, by being able to be there for you is is really a, a joy and a privilege to be of service. So I don't find it like, oh my God, another person wants to know. I'm like, Oh wow, this person trusts trusts me enough to mm. to call on me, and what what a great honor that is. Let me see what I can do to add value in some way right. or support. Um, but when it comes to me on my own, I actually really love my alone, quiet time. I need it to fuel up for how much activity happens throughout the me day. Um, I like to think of my bookends of the day, my my beginning of the day, and then my end of the day. Uh, what am I doing to really fuel my like self love practice, my meditation practice, um, to stay? That's the reason why we're fit. friends. <laughs> yeah, all spiritual people come come say hello. Yep. <laughs> uh, I just I really do make sure that I treat myself. I've never felt guilty about spoiling myself. I'm not one of those people that goes and like gets a massage and then feels bad for it, or gets a babysitter and feels bad for it. I kind of don't feel that guilty about mm -hmm. taking care of myself because I know if I don't make those consistent deposits, then there's no way I'm going to have it in me to go ahead and do what's, you know, what, what I want and what I'm capable of. I love it. And I, I mean, I truly believe women who invest in themselves are the richest women. That's, you know? I love that saying. Absolutely. I know. I, I think it's my new Indiaism. Okay. I got to write that down. Oh my God. Write that down. <laughs> Good thing we have this taped. <laughs> so how can people find Hey Mama? People can find Hey Mama on our website. It's heymama.co. Um, check it out if you're interested in applying and getting more involved in the community. Uh, we'd love to have you. You can fill out your application. It typically takes about a couple of weeks for us to review it. Um, you can find me personally on Instagram. I'm at Katya's Life. And um, yeah, that's probably the best way. Hey Mama's Instagram is Hey Mama Co. Um, and I'd love to love to hear from some of your followers because I'm sure that they're oh, dr they're know. drawn to you for a reason. And I know that if they're drawn to you, then I'm going to love them. I have no doubt. But remember, she's mine first, everybody. Katya, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. I really appreciate you carving out time for this today. And I'm really excited for our listeners and viewers to check out Hey Mama. I cannot stress how valuable it has been to me as a resource, as both a professional and as a mom, um, and as a friend and the people who I've met um, and the events. I mean, I cannot wait for the events as well because they are phenomenal. So thank you so much, Katya. Thank you, Indy. Keep shining bright. I adore you.